Hello YouTube, B3 are back with another exclusive action figure review. Today's figure is a figure I didn't even know existed until recently. It is the GameStop exclusive Battle Damage Batman from DC Collectibles and Arkham Knight. Yeah, so obviously I knew about the regular Arkham Knight Batman DC Collectibles released. I didn't pick it up because I was like, I have the Arkham Origins Batman. I'm fine with just having the Arkham Origins Batman as long as I have an Arkham Batman. I don't really care. The Origins one has great articulation and everything. I'm fine. Then I walk into GameStop and see this sucker on clearance. Didn't even know it existed. An exclusive figure. Really the same figure as the regular Arkham Knight Batman, but with a different paint job to make him look battle damaged. So yeah, they kind of do that with all the Arkham games, I think. I don't remember there actually being a battle-damaged um, Arkham Origins Batman, but there was definitely one for Arkham City. So, yeah, here we are, Batman himself. I really dug the outfit for Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight was a cool game, even though, you know, Arkham Knight's identity was pretty easy to call. And I do have this guy to go with my, um, my favorite DC Collectibles figure, my GameStop exclusive Arkham Knight Red Hood, which the review of should be up, I think. Yeah, it's, I'm sure it's definitely up at this point. But, oh, yeah, it's, it's up. I just remembered it's up. But, yeah, he's a really cool figure, you know. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see the battle damage too well on camera. It's not much more than a silver wash, honestly, except for on the cape. But he is a really nice figure. I am going to zoom out just a teeny tiny little bit here so you can take a better look at him. As you can see, uh, he is, of course, mostly just the Arkham Knight Batman, but with, like, scratches and stuff all over him. As you can see, he's got real prominent scuffs here on the chest, on the bat symbol. You can definitely see him there on the shoulders, all right? And then the cape looks really nice battle damage. It's covered in mud, as you can see. Both on the outside and the inside, great detail there. Uh, if it had like little holes and stuff in it, you know, that'd be nice. It wouldn't be too hard of a custom job to do, but uh, you know, I think that would have been a nice little touch so that people who did get the regular Batman could get this guy. And I, I did say I got him on clearance. I got him for about 14 bucks, which was really nice actually. I wouldn't have got him if he was 25, but 14, you bet your ass. All right, but yeah, he's very, very cool. Uh, I, I love his head sculpt. It's very nice. Um, you know, just great detail and paint all around. DC Collectibles has really stepped up, and they got better articulation as well. And speaking of articulation, let's just get right into it. The head is actually quite impressive. You can look up quite a lot. You can look down a little. Uh, side to side is very good, and you can kind of like tilt his head like that if he needs to. That's real nice. The arms go up and down. The shoulder pads hinder a little, but not terribly much. Forward and back. You know, and the shoulder pads do kind of push up, you know, if you do it enough. But I, I try not to do it because I don't want them to get, like, warped out of place. You know what I mean? And then you do have a bicep swivel also. Uh, double elbow bend, as you can see. Double is always very nice. Uh, you do have a little bit of rotation here in the wrist. And, you know, forward and back on the wrist as well. There is an ab crunch. Mine is stuck. And DC Collectibles figures are known for being kind of fragile. For the most part, so I'm not going to try to force it into crunching, just so you guys know. Waist swivel is not too great because it's a big oval and the utility belt hinders it, so there's kind of a good bit of hindrance on this figure. In and out on the legs is actually quite good, like really good. Forward and back's not bad either, can't really go back much, but forward, pretty good. Uh, and you got a like, swivel up here at the very top of the thigh, double knee bend right there, boop. So that's nice. And up and down on the foot as you can see, and a pretty good ankle pivot, actually. So that's really nice to have. Thanks for that. Mattel won't give us that. Think about that, Mattel. They used to give us that, and then they cut it. They stopped giving it to us. But yeah, he's really cool. Now let's check out some of his accessories. First up, we have Batman with his go-to weapon, the Batarang. Very uh, cool. Holds it just fine. Very, very nice. And here you can have a closer look. Very cool sculpt. And they even got some paint on the edges there, so it looks nice and sharp. Very neat little accessory. I really like it. And you can pretty much use it with any Batman you want, realistically. Just because it's a Batarang, and they can kind of just be switched out however you want. And here we have two more accessories. I know it seems like we just have his little gun here. But in all actuality, this hand is an interchangeable part. Uh, I don't know if you could tell, but this is a different left hand. It only comes with one different left hand. There are no alternate right hands, sadly enough. But this hand is specifically sculpted to hold his little 
gun here. I don't remember if this is the spray gun or if this is the grapple gun. I want to say spray gun, but it's pretty cool. As you can see, you know, nice detail and paint and stuff on it as well. It's been a while since I played an Arkham game. It's been quite a long time since I played an Arkham game, actually. I didn't play Arkham Knight, I just watched someone else play it. But yeah, pretty cool. It looks really nice. So now we're going to do some size comparisons. And first up, here is with some other DC Collectibles figures. These are fairly recent. We have Season 1 Flash here on the left from the CW show, and the Arkham Knight himself here on the right. And uh, he's perfect with Arkham Knight, absolutely perfect. Maybe a tiny bit big for the Flash, actually. But honestly, the Flash is kind of young. His suit's a lot slimmer. Batman's basically in battle armor right now. He gets more armored up with each Arkham game, it seems. So, you know, honestly, I actually, I would, I don't mind playing with the Flash. I actually display my Arkham Flash and Arrow stuff all together. So, yeah, you know, I'm going to have them displayed together either way. And I am going to show them with a comic figure real quick, another Batman figure. It is the Designer Series Nightwing from the New 52. And as you can see, he's kind of taller than Nightwing also. But, you know, I think it works, actually. I think it's fine. And here he is next to some of the regular 6-inch Mattel DC figures. Here on the left, the DC Universe Classics Power Girl. And here on the right, the new DC Comics Multiverse Joker. Uh, yeah, and it's the in-game Joker from the recent Batman story. And obviously he's way too big for them, so he's not going to scale well with, you know, the Multiverse, DC Universe Classics, uh, DC Unlimited, DC Signature Collection, stuff like that. Not going to happen. And here he is with our last bit of Mattel figures. Here on the left, the Movie Masters Dark Knight Rises Batman, and here on the right, the Movie Masters Man of Steel Superman, who are both obviously way too small for him. And here he is with, believe it or not, more DC Collectibles figures. These are from their Icons line, though. Here on the left, we have Black Adam, and here on the right, they're Batman. And obviously, he doesn't scale well with them either. So he's really only going to scale well with, you know, DC Collectibles stuff that's not Icons, and other, like, DC Direct type things, but... He's going to scale best with other Arkham figures, especially Arkham Knight. So what are my final thoughts on the DC Collectibles Battle Damage Batman from their Arkham Knight line? Well, he's actually quite a cool figure. Uh, I'm glad I didn't pick up the regular one so I could get this guy for cheap on clearance. There was a Harley Quinn on clearance too, maybe I should have grabbed her. Nah, I'm fine, I'll be fine without her. But. He's really cool. Uh, not much difference from the regular Arkham Knight Batman. If you have the regular Arkham Knight Batman, you might just want to keep this guy in packaging if your other one's already open. He's a GameStop exclusive, so down the line he'll be a bit more expensive. The GameStop exclusive Red Hood costs like a fortune now. Uh, I don't know what this guy's doing market-wise. Probably not as much, obviously, since he's basically the same figure as the first one. But, you know... If you were selling to an in-package collector, and both were mint, and you had the regular and the battle damage, they'd probably pick the battle damaged. Just saying. So, if you have the regular one, this would be a cool guy to keep in package, you know. If you don't, pop him open. Whatever. I really don't care what you do. It's your collection. Uh, all in all, I'm probably going to give him 4 out of 5 stars. He's a really cool figure. I really like him. I wish they would have done a little more for the battle damage, honestly, but... Eh, what you gonna do? It's an exclusive figure. But yeah, so you guys, thank you all so much for your support. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe. Check out all the links in the description below. Facebook, Twitter, other reviews. You know, we're reviewing lots of stuff, and we'll have more DC reviews coming up. I know we've been slacking on the DC and doing more Marvel lately, but now that more DC figures I want are coming out, you're gonna be getting more DC. Alright, so that's great. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you all later.